Hi boys and girls, let's review our words again. Our short A, stamp, prance, again, stamp, prance. Our AW, crawl, claw, saw, law, one more time. Crawl, claw, saw, law. Our AU words, caught, sauce, fraud, caught, sauce, fraud. And our AL words, stock, walk, haul. One more time. Stock, walk, haul. All right, so we had prologue, which meant an introduction. We had legend, which means a story passed down through the years. And now we have the word weave. If you weave, you lace things together to make, like you like lace threads together to make cloth. And so if we put an R on the end, weaver would be somebody who puts the pieces together to make the cloth. And so the cowherd told them to look for the weaver. So let's continue with our story. Again, we're gonna continue with Day of the Dragon King by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter three, the silk weaver. Jack and Annie kept walking across the pasture toward the road. Annie stopped when they neared the farmhouse. We have to find the silk weaver and give her the message, she said. Let's do that on our way back, said Jack. I'm worried about finding the Imperial Library. What if we don't have time, said Annie. We promised, and he was so nice. <sighs> Jack sighed. Okay, he said, but let's find her fast. And remember to keep your head down so no one will notice us. Jack and Annie bowed their heads as they headed toward the house. As they got closer, Jack peeked out from under his hat. An ox cart, an ox pulled a cart filled with hay. Men hoed the ground, women pushed wheelbarrows, piled high with grain. There, said Annie. She pointed to an open porch where a young woman was weaving cloth on a loom. That must be her. Annie ran to the silk weaver. Jack looked around to see if anyone was watching. Luckily, the farm workers seemed too busy to notice anything. Still, looking around carefully, Jack walked toward the porch. Annie was already talking to the silk weaver. What did he say? The young woman asked. Her voice was soft but strong. Her dark eyes glowed with happiness. He said you should meet him in the field at twilight, said Annie. He's so handsome. Yes, he is. The silk weaver gave Annie a shy smile. Then she reached down to a basket near her loom and picked up a ball of yellow thread. It was very brave of you to bring me the message, she said. Please accept this silk thread as my thank you. She handed Annie the ball of silk. It's beautiful, said Annie, feel. She handed it to Jack. The thread was smooth and soft. How do you make silk, said Jack. It is made from the cocoons of silkworms, said the weaver. Really, worms? That's neat, said Jack. Let me write that down. He reached into his sack. Please don't, said the silk weaver. The making of silk is China's most valuable secret. Anyone who steals the secret will be arrested. The Dragon King will have him put to death. And here's a picture of, of her handing him the silk, the silk thread. Oops, said Jack. He dropped the ball of silk into his sack. I think you must leave quickly, whispered the silk weaver. You have been seen. Jack looked over his shoulder. A man was pointing at them. Let's go, he said. Bye, said Annie. Good luck on your date. Thank you, the silk weaver said. Come on, said Jack. They hurried away from the silk weaver. Stop, someone shouted. Run, said Annie. And that's the end of our chapter for today. Um, why do you think they kept their heads down? Probably because even though their clothes were different, their faces aren't, and so they didn't want to get noticed. Um, they figure out who the silk weaver is because she's obviously the one using the loom to knot the threads together. And then how do you think a cocoon could be used to make silk? It's an interesting question. And why does Jack want to write down that information? Because that's a really cool kind of thing to do. But anyway, we'll read more tomorrow. Thanks for listening.